over, overarching theme we found was the need to shift from open loop systems to closed loop systems. To begin, on Lopez Island with water, uh, we Lopez Island receives an average of 25 inches of rain per year, which appears to be sufficient for current use trends and replenishes the aquifer, the groundwater. However, if everybody with an existing well were to withdraw its legally allowable amount, which is 5,000 gallons per day, it's a lot, uh, the island would surely run out of potable water. So this is something to think about for the long term. Um, thinking about closing that loop, we'll move into waste. Now, we, incurred, we encountered through many meetings with different people we were trying to talk to about waste, that waste really wasn't the right term. Resources were really a better term, recoverable resources. Uh, so to begin, well, another fact with this, Lopesians seem to be paying to have these resources removed from the island rather than recovering them. Uh, so to begin, the Fisherman Bay Sewer District, uh, Lopesians are paying for them to uh, filter, essentially, treat four to 500 gallons of water per month that they just then discharge into the ocean. That's four to 500 gallons that aren't potable water, you can't drink them, but you could certainly use them for a lot of irrigation. Not all irrigation, but they could be recovered. Second, Lopesians pay to have 80,000 gallons each year of septic sludge pumped from septic tanks and shipped to Anacortes to be incinerated. Now that's sl septic sludge that potentially could be turned into compost and therefore turned into you know, soil fertility. Third, Lopesians pay to have 400 tons of recyclables shipped off island per year for someone else to benefit from. Uh, so those are our waste slash recoverable resources we've identified. Um, so now we're getting into agri uh, sorry, economic challenges. We'll shift into agriculture and specific economic challenges that face it. I think most of you are familiar with these, but we've organized them into four main points. Um, land acquisition, uh, the prices of land have gone up. I don't have exact figures, but I believe when the Lopez Community Land Trust began in 1989, yeah, uh, in that year alone, land prices went up 189%, and it's just continued since then. So buying land outright is the first big barrier. Another option for land acquisition are leases, but the challenge there is infrastructure costs and current countywide and a yeah, countywide land use policy that doesn't allow a second permanent house on a parcel. Um, so, infrastructure costs, offenses, sheds, etc., irrigation systems, another, another barrier. Lastly, there are inputs, water. Uh, there's a state policy that Washington State owns all surface water. This is forcing uh, farmers to either illegally use pond water or to somehow obtain a special water right from the state, which is just another barrier to get through. Another input is fertility. Um, as Neil pointed out, most farms we visited did a really good job, you know, self-sufficient with their, their soil composting system and maintaining soil fertility, but overall it seems to be an issue on the island. Finally, talking about distribution of food. I know there's a big local, local war movement on the island but we see a lot of room for that increasing and a lot of desire for that to increase. So the more people eat seasonally, the easier it will be to connect local farmers and their supply to local consumers. And also, the more people eat seasonally, the more viable it will be for aspiring farmers to make a living on Lopez. So these are our overarching points that we found with agriculture, water, and waste. And we really welcome and encourage and want to hear from you. And we also have a lot of ideas for these, but we just wanted to open with our observations. So, with that, I think Clive's going to introduce our facilitation, so for us to get your feedback.